meditative contemplation. You can think of this as like a prayerful meditation. So I'm going to ask you to get comfortable in your seats for just a few moments here this morning as we take in the spirit of gratitude. I'm going to invite you to breathe in gratitude and breathe out generosity as you get comfortable here today. So maybe you allow yourself to be supported by the seat back. Close your eyes. Maybe you put your hands in your lap or comfortably by your side. As you go within today, breathing in gratitude and breathing out a spirit of generosity. Who have I come here to be? I have come here to be grateful. Gratitude is one of the most important forces on earth. Sitting in this presence of God, I know that nothing and no one can be against me. I am grateful for both the smooth and the bumpy parts of my journey. When I am grateful, I gain access to the depths of my heart where I find appreciation, love, affection, enthusiasm, strength, energy, and light. By focusing every day on all there is I have to be grateful for, my life experience is radically altered. Let us release any sense that a lack of gratitude has no place in our life, because it does. We are the very nature, the very presence of gratitude. I pause each day to focus on what I'm grateful for. I know that every day is filled with gifts and I am grateful for these blessings. I invite you to sit in the quiet here of your gratitude for just a few moments as we enter the silence here this morning. Just allow yourself to enter that divine presence, that spirit of gratitude within.
Now in your heart, this presence of gratitude, we have come here to be grateful. In the words of Khalil Gibran, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. So I invite you to think about what is it of yourself, of the presence of God that you can give to one another and other people throughout our community this month. We are grateful for the spirit of generosity within us. Khalil Gibran also said, and you receivers, and you are all receivers, assume no weight to gratitude, lest you lay a yoke upon yourself and upon him who gives. Rather rise together with the giver on his gifts as on wings. For to be over mindful of your debt is to doubt his generosity, who has the free hearted earth for mother and God for father. I invite you to be aware of this cycle of generosity, of having gratitude for receiving, as well as gratitude for the giving. As you breathe in, breathe in gratitude. And as you breathe out, breathe out generosity. I invite you to gently bring your awareness back to your body temple here this morning. Maybe you begin by gently wiggling fingers and toes, or maybe gently just rolling your wrist or your ankles maybe rolling your shoulders forward or back, and then just gently bring your presence back here this morning. And when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes. How was that for a moment of gratitude this morning? Gratitude and generosity. Well, good morning. My name is Melissa Arendt, in case you didn't get it the first time, the second, or the third. <laughs> um, I am the team leader of the spiritual leadership team here at Unity Spiritual Center of Panama City. I do indeed wear many hats, but I am so thankful, so joyful that you are here with us today. It is a new month, the month of November, and with this new month comes a new monthly Sunday service series. This month, Bill and I will be sharing about the spirit of gratitude. So we're going to be exploring a little bit about the nature of gratitude, about what it is, how we cultivate a little bit more of it in our lives, and some qualities that we're grateful for. So this morning, I'm going to kick this off by talking a little bit about the link between gratitude and generosity, for these things are inextricably connected, right? So it's a beautiful connection, gratitude and generosity. It's a connection that honors both our receiving and our giving. So. As I often like to do, I'm going to start with a definition. What is gratitude? As Susan so beautifully mentioned this morning in her introduction, gratitude can be defined as the quality of being thankful and a readiness to show appreciation, to show kindness. Now, when we refer to the spirit of gratitude, we're referring to our ability to cultivate moments of gratitude within our lives, but also our innate capacity to cultivate and express a spirit, a consciousness of gratitude in our lives. 
So gratitude is both a momentary state that we can consciously choose to take part in any moment of any day, but it's also an innate ability within us. If we believe that this divine presence has an expression in us, this Christ consciousness, then we have access to those divine qualities and we can allow them to express through us. So let's break these down a little bit. As a momentary state, something we create in the moment, gratitude is a conscious action. It's our thoughts, our words, our behaviors that express appreciation for something at a particular moment in time. I am thankful. I am thankful for each person who showed up yesterday at the community breakfast to serve our community. I hope you share with me in that thankfulness, in that appreciation. This is an example of these momentary states of gratitude. And we express this when we think about what we're grateful for. When we say thank you, when we share our appreciation through our words, as well as through our example, as well as through our gestures. Maybe it's doing a favor for someone else. Maybe it's offering a hug or a smile. Even something as simple as a smile to say, I see you, I appreciate your presence. I appreciate what you've given me through your presence, right? So even something as simple as a smile is a way to express our gratitude. So whatever form your gratitude practice takes, it can take many forms. Remind yourself that you have the ability to consciously choose to be grateful any moment, any day. So let's go a little bit deeper, shall we? On a deeper level as spiritual beings, having this human experience, right? We can cultivate this deep ability, this consciousness, our innate ability to be the spirit of gratitude, to be the consciousness, the expression of gratitude as a divine quality. Jesus expressed gratitude. So too can we express our gratitude as a divine quality. We cultivate the divine quality of gratitude within us, not just by consciously making the decision to have these moments of gratitude, but also by going within, renewing the wellspring of our being, that connection to that divine presence within. When we go into prayer, when we go into deep depths of meditation, right, we're reminded of our gratitude. We're reminded that substance is infinite. And that no matter the appearance of circumstances on the outside, we are surrounded by blessings. We are always surrounded by blessings. Now, when we practice prayer and meditation, we are also reminded that our very essence as that Christ consciousness is of love is of kindness, is of gratitude, and yes, is of generosity. We are reminded we are the very nature of gratitude. We are the very nature of generosity. In these moments of inner contemplation, inner prayer, inner meditation, we can be grateful for all that we have. We can be grateful for infinite substance, be grateful for infinite blessings, because they are all around us. And more than that, we can be grateful to share our gratitude, to share our blessings generously. But there is a third dimension of gratitude here that takes these two and really bridges it to how we show up 
Yes, it's a momentary state that we can choose to create in any moment. And yes, it is a divine quality that we can express. But gratitude gets us into the flow of generosity consciousness. It is a bridge, a gateway into the flow of that spirit of generosity that we want to see more of. Now you might be saying, well, Melissa, you like to define things. How are we going to define generosity? Generosity can be defined as our ability to be liberal in giving, liberal in sharing. You can also think of this as being unselfish in giving, unselfish in sharing. And it's our ability to cultivate that spirit of giving. You might have heard of that spirit, pay it forward, where you don't know who you're benefiting, but you're paying it forward to the next person, knowing that you're sharing those blessings with somebody else. Now, being grateful does cultivate more gratitude, but it also cultivates more generosity. So it's part of this flow. Gratitude gets us into this spirit, into this flow of generosity consciousness. Now, I came across this quote this week as I was exploring this topic, and I wanted to share it with you. I shared part of it with you in the meditation, but I want to share the whole thing. In the words of Tara Brock, who is a psychologist and a meditation teacher, she says, gratitude is like breathing in, letting ourselves be touched by the goodness in others and in our world. Generosity is like breathing out, sensing our mutual belonging and offering our care. Wow, this is a cycle. Breathing in and breathing out reminds us of that generosity cycle. Gratitude leads to generosity and our generosity leads to more gratitude. Now, I know that we are often thankful for what we receive from others, that we share our gratitude in this congregation. But I want you to take a moment here to think about something you're grateful for today. One thing that you're grateful for today. So I'm gonna share something I'm grateful for. I've been grateful for this week and today. Not only did I take time away to complete the ministerial school application and submit it. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I am grateful for your support. I am grateful for the kindness, for the generosity of time of each of my references, including Reverend Ron back there, who took time out of their busy weekend to write words of endorsement, words of recommendation, words of support. My husband did the same. They require that as my partner and spouse. I did not ask him what he said. <laughs> I'm hoping it's all good. But no, in faith, I'm trusting that those words were as generous as they were in giving their time. And so I just want to say thank you here publicly for all the support that I've received in this process. Yet, even in this moment of gratitude, I can recognize there may be some times in my past where I didn't express gratitude as well as I would have liked to. And I can recognize there might be times in my future that, you know what, I might miss the mark. I might not express gratitude as much as I would like to. Yet here today, I have an awareness, an awareness that I can reacquaint myself with time and time again. By expressing my gratitude, I know I'm not just cultivating more gratitude, I'm cultivating more generosity. Now, in his book, Teach Us to Pray, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore truly did believe that words of praise, words of thanks, 
Words of gratitude were a kind of mental magnet. And that, yes, it attracts more to us, but it also expands, sets free, and radiates the energy of gratitude, the energy of generosity out into the world. You may not know it, but science seems to support Charles Fillmore's findings more than 100, almost 100 years later. And this view that gratitude is a mental magnet, there have been scientific studies that have found that those who practice gratitude are indeed more generous in their giving. And those who are more generous in their giving, studies have found, are happier. Now, I don't know about you, but I want more of this gratitude, generosity, happiness energy, right? I want to get into this flow. So you can see it as a cycle. And it starts with simply offering your thanks or doing something with a generous spirit. Now, we can think of gratitude as more than just a momentary state, more, of this, more than just this divine essence, this divine quality within us. We can think of it as a bridge, as a gateway that allows us to step into this law of prosperity, into this law of generosity, into this law of giving and receiving. Now, gra gratitude is certainly allows us to step into this flow of generosity. But we're not giving when we give just to receive, right? That's not the intention. A true generosity consciousness is one that blesses the flow. It blesses it from a place of love. It blesses it from a place of life. It blesses it from a place of abundance without a worry about how the gratitude, how the generosity is going to be returned to you. By knowing you are in that flow, by knowing you are in that cycle, you know you will receive. What that looks like, you have no expectation, no demand on. And when you receive, you willingly, unselfishly give. So Charles Fillmore went one step further. Not just as gratitude as a mental magnet, he believed gratitude and thanksgiving were both necessary in demonstrating prosperity through divine law, this divine law of giving and receiving. In order to be in that divine law, in order to have that divine law show up and express in your life, gratitude was part of that. So through our gratitude, we are generous and showing our appreciation and our kindness. It's right there in what gratitude is. Gratitude is a generosity in itself. You are generous in your love. You are generous in your appreciation. And through generosity, we're able to see more of what we are thankful for. And this puts us into the flow of this generosity consciousness. Now, you might have thought we were done with our Way Showers talk, with our Way Showers month. But guess what? I have a little bit more to offer you today. As a Way Shower, Jesus taught both gratitude and generosity. Through his actions, Jesus taught his disciples that gratitude is part of this flow of generosity consciousness. As he sat on the mountaintop and he wanted to feed the masses who would listen to him teach, he gave thanks before breaking the bread and the fish into pieces. At the Last Supper with his disciples, he blessed the bread and wine before sharing them with his disciples. Of course, we know if we look at this teaching that the bread and the wine don't correlate directly to the blood and body of Christ. Rather, they were symbolic of substance, of life, of the infinite supply of this divine presence that we call God this spirit of generosity, this infinite wellspring. 
So in giving gratitude, you open the door. You open the door, this beautiful, wonderful door to generosity consciousness, to the spirit of generosity. Now, when we think of Jesus' teachings, I think it's easy to, to take note of the times that he said to give away your material possessions. But Jesus taught his disciples a lot more than that. He taught them a generosity much deeper. He taught his disciples to have a generosity of love when he invited them to love God, to love their neighbors, to even love their enemies. That's a generosity of love, to love someone you disagree with. Jesus also taught his followers to have a generosity of forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22, we're told, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Peter asked. Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. I don't know about you, but that's certainly a generosity and forgiveness. It's a generosity I don't know that I've always been able to meet and live up to, right? If someone does you wrong, sometimes that's hard, but it is a generosity. So as you enter into this spirit of generosity, the spirit of gratitude today, this week, this month, I want you to take a moment to consider how can you practice more gratitude in your life? What can you do today? What can you do tomorrow? What are you willing to do this week and this month to generate more gratitude? How can you practice more generosity in your life? What is one thing you can do today? What is one thing you can do tomorrow? What's something you could do this week or this month to get yourself into this cycle of generosity consciousness? What does that look like for you? Maybe you'll decide to start someplace small, like a gratitude list, or write a letter of gratitude to someone who has given you something that you want to tell them, I appreciate. I appreciate you showing up for me. I appreciate you being here in this way. Maybe you'll decide to be generous by paying it forward at the coffee shop the next time you go or the drive through restaurant. As long as we're reminded that we enjoy our food, why? Maybe getting healthier options, right? <laughs> Maybe we give away that item that's been sitting there collecting dust that we have an attachment to, but we don't really use, we don't really need, so maybe it can benefit someone else. Maybe you dig deeper, maybe you say, you know what, I have a really prized possession I don't want to part with, but I know somebody that that would be perfect for. Maybe you decide to be generous in giving your love to your family, to your friends. Maybe even to someone you disagree with, Maybe all of the above. Maybe you decide to be generous in your forgiveness. Maybe you start with yourself and forgive yourself for the resentment and the pain that you've allowed yourself to cling to. And you say, I want to relax, let go, release and surrender all that stuff, right? Maybe you reach out to someone who you disagree with. Maybe you let them know that you have given them forgiveness. Chances are they might not even realize you were holding on to that. Maybe you write a letter of forgiveness. If it's someone you no longer have contact with, someone that you no longer speak to, or maybe someone who's no longer with us. I know after my father passed away back in 2010, I had to do some deep soul searching 
and some deep forgiveness work to forgive him when I couldn't tell him, I forgive you. Gratitude is the gateway, is the intention that leads us into a generosity consciousness. And so I hope that you will join Bill and I this month as we celebrate both our spirit of gratitude and the spirit of generosity. So I want to leave you with a poem here this morning. This is a poem on generosity and gratitude from Ian Paul Marshall. And I really enjoy his book. It's called The Tao of Abundance. To give is to receive, and when one receives, it is a prelude to the giving of which is about to occur, an endless cycle energized by grace and gratitude. So thank you so much for your kind attention today. Namaste. And we can start expressing our gratitude by giving Melissa another round of applause. Thank you so much. Oops. <laughs> well, you heard me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you, Melissa, so much. Now, we have an opportunity to enter into a generosity consciousness. Thank you to all who have continued blessing our spiritual community with your tithes and offerings. We are truly blessed by the giving of everyone who attends and gives in person or gives regularly through a tithe through their bank or um, However you want to give. We're going to go through some of those in a minute. <laughs> okay, so we are thankful for everybody giving generously. And we feel if you feel led by spirit today, we invite you to prepare your gift now. If you are being led by recurring gift, to make a recurring gift, you can visit our website and set up a monthly gift via PayPal. Um, and we now invite you to hold your gift in your hand, or if you didn't bring a gift today to give or have given some other means, you can hold your love and appreciation in your hand um, or your hands over your heart as we say our offering blessing together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Amen. And thank you for this opportunity to serve you today. Oh, yeah, our music team is coming back up. <laughs> and that does include me. <laughs> surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am stronger every moment, every day. My mind is willing and my heart is open wide. I trust my instincts and let spirit be my guide. I vow to live a life that's real and true and free as I continue walking in this mystery. I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. 
I will release any fear that blocks my way For every step I take is taken in pure faith And I am stronger every moment, every day And I am grateful every moment, every day Okay, thank you Unity Singers, and thank you Susan again for platforming for us, and again thank you Melissa for a wonderful message today. As been mentioned several times, it's November, and uh, so the first Sunday in November is when we're going to celebrate birthdays this month. So. The only person I believe is on our event sheet is Kim Martin, and I don't think she's here today, and if you don't know Kim, she has been our bookkeeper for our board of trustees for, what, 20 years maybe? I don't know, but it's a long time, many years. So we want to say happy birthday to Kim Martin. Uh, her birthday, uh, what day of the month is it? I don't have the event sheet with me. The 9th, the 9th okay. So November the 9th, we want to make sure we remember Kim Martin, her birthday, okay. Are there any others uh, since we're, birthdays in November? My daughter, some of y'all know, Annie. Oh, 20, Annie. Annie turned 28 on Friday. That's <laughs> Friday, okay. All right. Well, happy birthday to Annie as well. Okay, are there any others? Okay, now when we get done singing the birthday song, I want you to remember that there is going to be cake. Um, <laughs> we've already been told there's going to be plenty of cake, so all right. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. There's no one like you. Uniquely created, I love knowing you. I bless you with life and abundance galore. God bless you, my loved one, and have many more. Very good. Thank you.